Hi, Tim Bean, how are you? Good, well, glad to be here. Thank you, everyone. Welcome in France. Um, you have a very interesting background because you have been a bank regulator, you know, in the in US almost for 60 years. And now you engage as a global government relationship officer with Central Exchange OKX. So we say OKX or OKX? OKX. OKX. Okay, so what did you choose to, to cross the line, you know? What did you choose to, to go to the, to the ecosystem and, uh, on the corporate side? Uh, first of all, it was not by design or any uh, miraculous uh, foresight. I think I was just uh, very lucky to get into the uh, Bitcoin ecosystem in 2014. Uh, I started my career as a bank examiner, uh, bank regulator for the FDIC and the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco. Uh, I examined bank for about 16 years and then uh, slowly went into a little more uh, innovative uh, uh, companies such as Visa, uh, the credit card company, for five years, where I led their uh, credit risk and AML um, uh, controls. And then finally, uh, in 2014, I caught the Bitcoin bug and joined BitPay, a Bitcoin merchant processor that accepted Bitcoin as a form of payment. Um, and it was just an amazing entry point. Uh, learned a lot and then finally joined the OK Group in 2016. So I've been there almost seven years and it's been uh, quite a journey. Uh, but I think uh, just, uh, you know, what it really proves is that um, you can always learn um, and, and grow in your career. Uh, and it's been a fascinating ride. And before to discuss about regulation, um, we saw many bankruptcies uh, the past years, you know, since Terra Luna, for example, but so many centralized entity falls, you know. You are a centralized entity, so my question is, why we still need those centralized entities and why they are still here, you know? Well, first of all, let me emphasize that I think uh, the power of Bitcoin is the peer-to-peer -peer ability. Uh, and I wish and hope that more and more people will use the uh, self-custody uh, and peer-to-peer -peer feature of uh, tokens uh, such as Bitcoin and really empower themselves. And so, uh, however, just like, um, where maybe I have some cash in my pocket and I'm my own personal bank, or I use a bank and uh, use a centralized service, I think there is room for both, uh, centralized finance and decentralized finance. I think uh, decentralized finance is gonna be very exciting, uh, but for the mass public, I think uh, companies like us have a role and a good service to provide. Hopefully we make it easier, safer, faster uh, for the population to come into the ecosystem. And so I think uh, that's why uh, I work for a centralized platform. But also we, we believe that we could be a portal to DeFi. In fact, uh, if you go to our webpage, we have a distinct Web3 uh, tab. What that really means is that it's a self-hosted wallet. All the private keys are yours. And so uh, I think that's uh, gonna be very um, exciting for years to come. That's still the centralized entity are still the, the main door, you know, for new customers in the, uh, in the ecosystem. And that's a landmark too for the for regulators across the world. Are you agree with that? Did you are you agree with uh, with this uh, with this? You know, regulators. Um, let me just start by saying they have a very tough job. Uh, it, it's not easy, right? They're always in the spotlight. Uh, their main purpose is to uh, ensure that consumers are protected. And um, you know, I I think that they spend a lot of time thinking about what needs to be regulated before they 
uh, enact how to regulate it. So uh, if I could kind of go back in history, believe it or not, in the US, FinCEN, which is a part of the US uh, Treasury, started to regulate cryptocurrencies back in 2013 uh, of March. So it's already 10 years old in the US. One big distinction, though, FinCEN defined uh, convertible virtual currencies, uh, CVC, convertible virtual currencies. And that last word kind of defined it as money or currency. And so that's why you have FinCEN as that regulator in the US. Uh, obviously, now you see other regulators, whether it's uh, a regulator in charge of commodities or a regulator in charge of securities or a regulator in charge of taxes, making their own rules uh, in the US. So unlike uh, Europe, in the US, there's many regulators of cryptocurrencies. And what's your view you know, about what's happening in the, in the US? Is it a real problem, or that's going to be solved in the, in the future in a, not an easy way, but yeah, in an easy way? What's your view about this? You know, uh, I always believe that um, our company needs to abide by regulations, and we're not active in lobbying for regulations, uh, because it's, a, it's also another very tough job to form and shape uh, how laws will be passed, uh, bills will be formed. So um, yeah, I always like to say it is what it is, and we must comply with all local regulations. And what's the difference approach taken by regulators you know, across the world? What's the main differences between Asia, Europe, and also United States, as you described, but more between Asia and, uh, and Europe? You know, I'll put it uh, even bigger throughout the globe. Because there's regulations, um, I, would, I would put them in two classes. There's, there's old or legacy regulations, as well as new regulations. And because the, the token and Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are new, that's why we're having so much of the difficulties uh, with the legacy regulations. But some countries uh, and some territories, including Europe, has made huge promising efforts uh, to develop a brand new regulatory framework. Uh, Mika is the best example, right? So they are refreshing, maybe not even refreshing, they are just making a brand new, built from the ground up regulation to uh, hopefully welcome and control and protect this new industry. So I would put that on the kind of the right hand of the scale. Uh, in the US, there's legacy regulations that they are trying to clarify and provide more guidelines uh, so that it applies to a new technology and new use cases. Um, you mentioned Asia. I think in Hong Kong, you're seeing them uh, kind of in the middle, uh, modifying their existing laws and welcoming the industry. Uh, I would put Dubai very close to Europe uh, in VARA, they came out with brand new 300 pages of regulations for the crypto industry. Uh, it, it sounds a, a little scary, but also there's a blessing in there because uh, you don't have to read or you don't have to leverage the old regulation. There's a brand new regulation for crypto. And I think that's a cleaner, more transparent and clearer way to work with the industry. So uh, that's why I think Europe is especially uh, promising with Mika coming up. And, you know, in Hong Kong, they choose to, to launch a license, you know? And in Europe, it's like a framework, complete framework, you know? What, what's some differences between, between those regulator, re regulation? I think, uh, first of all, the license in France 
uh, covers uh, spot activities. So it's, it's come a long way. It's a brand new regulation. It's built from the ground up. Regulators are thinking and consulting with the industry to uh, provide a, a balanced framework for this new industry. So I think that's a huge positive. Uh, the, the one drawback is on uh, securities activities are still regulated in the traditional manner, uh, financial instruments. So I think that's, that's always a little complicated uh, going forward, especially in the US, uh, because there are uh, prominent regulators responsible for, for their own lanes, uh, whether it's a security or commodity uh, or money convertible virtual currencies. You say you own your European headquarter uh, in France, you know. Why France is so attractive, you know? Not only about regulation, but you talked to me before this interview about the ecosystem too. So why it is so attractive to be in France? First of all, regulations is uh, what m myself and my teammates here uh, work on on a daily basis, but it's only one important factor in evaluating a territory or geography. Second and most important is the community. Uh, how is the demand uh, by the community and the ecosystem? So uh, you folks here, you are the entrepreneurs. Uh, you're uh, pushing the edges of the ecosystem and so we, an exchange cannot just prosper by itself. Uh, we, we're a portal, but um, entrepreneurs like yourself actually help expand the ecosystem. And so that's why we are so attracted to what's going on in France. Uh, when we saw the numbers, there are approximately 70 registered DASPs already in France. And I, th and I think that's uh, amazing. And that's uh, uh, an achievement reflected on yourselves. So we need that ecosystem. Um, and it's, it's the whole neighborhood or environment that has to be uh, robust, you know, not just uh, one or two players. According to you, it's uh, the most interesting ecosystem in the world. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's the most because you know, uh, uh, but, uh, but pretty close. Uh, if, if you had to ask me what other uh, territories are very interesting, I would put uh, Dubai or the UAE right there as well. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's something that the regulators and entrepreneurs will obviously do uh, a lot of homework um, because technology is universal. Uh, what's also amazing about crypto is that there, no one has a monopoly on it. Uh, entrepreneurs throughout the globe are working on crypto, and uh, I think that's amazing. And where are you in France? You know, you, you, you talk about the entrepreneur. Uh, are you in touch with some of them? And uh, what kind of discussion do you have with them? It's close to be some, some deals, you know, or it, uh, it's far away from this? No, so uh, we are um, uh, registered, or sorry, we are applying uh, to become registered uh, with the AMF. Uh, we are uh, uh, obviously very thankful for you to invite us and uh, Faustine to the ADAN uh, conference. Um, so we would love to uh, seek to be a member um, and, and just slowly uh, but surely to meet uh, everyone and to be part of the ecosystem. Um, you know, I, I hope uh, you can uh, reach out to myself, uh, to Caroline Dennis, uh, to Patrick Sean. They are French speakers, so uh, please feel free to uh, talk to them and reach out. But uh, I think, uh, you know, we, we hope to be one uh, player in the ecosystem. And I think that's what we are aspiring for. You are a centralization, as you, as we say. Uh, 
what is the most important lesson we have to remember for the future according to the past year, you know, to avoid some, some risk or most of them, you know? Wow, that's, <laughs> uh, that's big. You can give a range of, uh, of answer if you want, but uh, not only one. Yeah. You know, um, I think uh, the, uh, in the conference today, in your bag, there was a business card for a uh, proof of conference attendee, uh, and you can get a NFT. How many of you have done that? All right, great. I would suggest everyone to do that because uh, we need to be users uh, of the technology, number one. Number two, as entrepreneur and businesses out there, I think we're all trying to serve uh, the customer better and uh, faster and easier and more seamless. So, um, you know, I think uh, that's what's needed. Cryptocurrency is uh, still very complicated, to be honest. Uh, it's a bit scary, to be honest. You lose your uh, private address, you lose your keys. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's scary for some people. So I think to make it easier, to make it seamless, uh, is probably the second most important thing. But number one, I think uh, we all still need to be users and uh, to really test out the amazing features that we all are producing. With the market, with regulation, you know, you have to, to manage with lots of, uh, not problem, but lots of, uh, lot of things. Uh, how is it possible to manage with, uh, with a lot of this, you know, as a centralized entity? It's not easy uh, running a centralized entity. Because it's very different uh, across the world. Or, yes. You know. But, you know, um, we're not perfect. Uh, we try to do our best. Uh, I think uh, you as business leaders, uh, you're probably not perfect. You try to do your best. Uh, I think we really do need to get fraud under control and all the uh, schemes uh, out there. Um, so I think it just takes time. And you'll see the, the amazing players that uh, come out of the ecosystem. So uh, I think that's, that's what's needed. So why traditional finance you know, should care about crypto? Because you talk about this why uh, they, they should care now about crypto? I think everyone should care about crypto. Uh, why? Yeah, why? Because we talk a lot about Bitcoin in uh, P2P. And, and um, whether it's Bitcoin or even uh, other crypto, I think it's just uh, a new phenomenon. And it's going to eventually help and power other phenomenon such as NFT, such as uh, Web3. And uh, it's a brand new different technology and uh, format that has power in its own. It does not need a centralized party. Sure, centralized party are going to help and bring out services. But ultimately, I think it's going to transform. And uh, I think there will be peer-to-peer -peer power and usage in the future of uh, crypto systems. And what is in that the role of a centralized exchange, you know, in that to, to, to build the bridge as you, as you described? Yeah, you know, um, I think uh, centralized exchanges need to provide value. And as long as they're providing good value to consumers, I think they would be appreciated. So as long as when, when centralized exchanges don't provide value, that's when it's going to cease or get smaller. But if they continue to provide value, I think they'll get bigger. It's not to say that DeFi is an uh, inverse trade-off. It's not a, 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 a closed pie. The pie can get bigger. So I think uh, DeFi has a great track uh, in its own. And that's why we are spending so much resources to be the portal and to allow customers 
to enter DeFi safely, fast, uh, and in a secure manner. And how is it possible to, to audit some centralized exchanges, you know, with, for example, the proof of reserves? Can you talk about, uh, about this? And what is going on in your, in your exchange about this? Yeah, I think that's very important because centralized um, exchanges, or we should even call it just centralized entities, they come in different shapes and sizes. Uh, believe it or not, uh, there were centralized uh, crypto banks, right? That's, that's their role. They want to take your tokens and lend it out uh, off platform. That is their mission. So I think um, everyone needs to understand what the centralized entity does. Uh, for, for OKX, uh, in addition to being a portal on the DeFi side and to support self-hosted wallets, we do have a centralized exchange. Uh, but that's where we also like to emphasize and uh, be transparent of our proof of reserves. And I think that's very important because uh, we're not a crypto bank. Uh, there, there are and there can be crypto banks, but that's not our role. So we are uh, simply an exchange, a marketplace where people can bring, trade uh, their crypto for that centralized business. The point here is that we all need to know what the centralized entities do because they all have different models. And I think, uh, fortunately, the regulators are also understanding that and, uh, and regulating for that. And how is it, you talk, you talk about proof of reserve. How is it possible to put trust you know, in proof of reserve? You know, because there are lots of criticism about this uh, the, uh, the past year. How is it possible, you know? We, you, you, you have to, to, to launch some standard, how is it possible? You know, the critics, uh, or may, maybe even called haters, um, I think they are overemphasizing the, the limitation of proof of reserves. I think what um, most people can see is that it's one method of showcasing uh, your controls and what you have. Even I am not against uh, traditional financial audits. I think that's a great control, but it's just one control. And so uh, I think uh, as, uh, as entities, we should think about having multiple controls, including the old traditional uh, KPMG audit, uh, proof of reserves uh, that are backed by uh, Merkle Tree, uh, or even using third parties such as Nansen and having a third party kind of attest to your proof of reserves. So I think there's various ways, and we should uh, you know, be open to having multiple, not just one, to make it more robust. You have been in this industry, or you are in this industry almost since uh, 10 years, something like this. Uh, what is your view about those 10 years, you know? Uh, how do you how are you able to describe this evolution in the ecosystem? You know about institutionalization and uh... well, I I haven't been here uh, for for ten years, but uh, I think I've been uh, very fortunate to b start in two thousand and fourteen uh, with BitPay, and um, you know so I've seen a couple businesses, different businesses in the crypto system, and uh, I think uh, the most fascinating or uh, uh, remarkable aspect of this industry is that we're still early. And um, uh, there's going to be even smarter people that come out with uh, bigger uh, solutions, bigger products, bigger technology. So if I could make an analogy to the internet stage, I don't think we've seen who the uh, Amazon is or who the Google is. Uh, I think we're still waiting uh, for those uh, uh, prominent players to come out in the crypto world. So hopefully it's uh, even one of you. So with that, 
maybe that's the final message. Perfect time, Zev. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Tim. Yeah.